Some of you guys are pure savages. Savages. In the comment section of one of the last videos that was put out actually last night, uh, this says, watch before tomorrow, Kathy Wood's new warning, which great timing on that. Kathy, she was talking about AI stocks, specifically NVIDIA, and uh, how they need to come down, how they're disassociated with the fundamentals. That's neither here or there. This comment says, why do you talk like that? Can you turn some lights on? You look like a little creep in the dark. I mean, what do you even respond to that? All I have is noted. I mean, seriously, keep the comments coming because that's just hilarious. I take into consideration uh, all feedback and try to make adjustments, but uh, <laughs> you just can't make it up. I actually had to turn off the light that I have back here. I turned it back on because, I mean, why not, I guess. The power surge strip was getting, like, really hot, almost, like, burn your hand to the touch. I figure, why not? Why not let it run? I got home insurance. But I will go ahead and uh, get some natural light in here because uh, it's summertime, you know? Why not? Oh, it is kind of rainy out. Maybe that's a little better. Honestly, that really didn't do much. I still look like a little creep in the dark. <laughs> but let's go ahead and uh, get started with this video. We actually have a lot to talk about on this Friday afternoon. Now, I know a lot of people clock out on Fridays. Shout out to you guys that are actually here to watch this video on a Friday night. And hopefully this, this information um, finds you well. We're actually going to go over a lot of things. Um, that that need to be said. One, we're going to look at some of the major events coming next week. We're going to talk about the way our markets traded today and the sign that is flashing that we might get a lot more downside from here. And you really want to take note of this. We're also going to go over all of your Tesla stock specific news today, the most important news that you need to know. We're going to look at some of your search trend data around the Cybertruck and other Tesla models just to show you that there's actually a lot of search trends that are looking good for Tesla right now. And this is really the opposite of what an institutional investor or someone with more knowledge than you will tell you. And I mean, if you just look at Google Trends, it'll say there's more people talking about searching and honestly, probably buying Teslas right now. And I think this could be a solid upside surprise in 2024. Among other things that we'll talk about here in this video, I will also show you my arm position that I have an arm for the lockup expiration. That's going to be on March 12th. That is next Tuesday. There's also CPI that comes out next Tuesday and other events later in the week that we'll discuss. But I do wanna show you my position in arm that when I say these things, I'm actually putting my money behind them. The same as we make Tesla videos every single day. I'm actively putting my money behind Tesla almost every single day. I've been a Tesla investor since 2019, sold some too soon, bought more, still own a large amount. But I mean, I think right now you have a very large opportunity ahead in Tesla specifically. Do I like the S&P or the NASDAQ trading at these all time highs? Absolutely not. Hell no, not, a, not even close. But other areas of the markets like Tesla offer a very good risk to reward opportunity. That's because I think the risk is priced into Tesla stock. Tesla is down 30% year to date. You got a lot of risk priced into Tesla stock at that point. The stock has lost a lot of value. Whereas the S&P, the NASDAQ, AI stocks, all of these high flyers that people want to own so bad they're willing to FOMO. Those stocks have no risk priced in, no recession risk, no problematic risk, no business cycle risk, nothing. No inflation risk, no Fed risk. Those are stocks you want to avoid. Typically, you want to buy when risk is priced into assets, not when there's no risk priced in. There's always going to be risk and there's always going to be problems that come about. But yeah, that's a rant I could really go on with all day. 
Now, I do want to get into the meat and bones of this video, but there is some pretty notable Tesla news today that I do want to share with you guys first before we kind of go over what happened today. A little bit more in depth, the whole ARM situation coming next week and your other large events. And again, I will show you my ARM position just for full transparency's sake. Tesla says they will start deliveries of the Model Y in Malaysia next week. Polestar has joined Tesla in quitting Australia's main car lobby over the campaign it had launched against the federal government's proposed new vehicle emission standards. Polestar says we cannot support it. The EPA has confirmed the 2024 Model Y performance has 279 miles of range. This is comparable to Tesla's initial estimate of 285 miles, so a six mile difference that's actually pretty good. The public prosecutor's office in the eastern German city of Frankfurt have opened a case against the Tesla protesters who set fire to an electrical pole. Case focuses on criminal offenses of sabotage and infrastructure causing harm to the community. And if you're curious what the harm to the community actually looked like, it was one of these things you might see in a cornfield set ablaze, and apparently it cost hundreds of millions of dollars to replace it. Acura announced that all versions of the upcoming 2024 Acura ZDX are expected to qualify for the full federal $7,500 tax credit. Apparently Rivian got over 68,000 reservations for the R2 since yesterday, and this is really, you know, kind of making me question at least why people are so negative on evs and so positive on hybrids all of a sudden adam jonas and everyone else loves hybrids i haven't seen any data to show that hybrids are you know outperforming or doing better in the u.s than evs or ice vehicles i think you either buy an ev correct me if i'm wrong or if i'm crazy here you either buy an ev or you buy a gas vehicle i don't want an ev and gas vehicle that just no, why would I do that? That doesn't make sense. China hybrids do well, but they're a lot different, I guess. I don't think that really catches on with the U.S. demographic. Not in the way that it's, you know, talked about right now. Joe Tetmeyer took some drone shots of Giga Texas outbound lot today, and you can see quite a few Cybertrucks over here in the testing lot kind of area of uh, Giga Texas, quite a few, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 of them over here. One of them actually was uh, turned on from what you can see here in this image. But take a look at all of these cyber trucks. You're talking at least 100, maybe 150, 170 cyber trucks here, maybe even closer to 200 being spotted today with more configurations, more, uh, you know, invites being sent out every single day. I think Wall Street's crazy for not even thinking about the cyber truck ramping faster than expected or a potential halo effect to the Tesla brand. That's one catalyst down the line that could come in 2020. 2024 that I'll tell you right now is not priced in to Tesla stock at all. If anything, it's priced into Tesla stock that the Cybertruck's going to be a complete failure. Tesla says they are working on an NACS extension cable, which will be available for purchase in the future. Tesla's Giga Berlin plant will resume operations next week, the head of its work council said on Friday. Starting today, Tesla is offering existing owners in the US and Canada a paint or interior color upgrade when they order and take delivery of a vehicle from existing inventory by March 31st. This can be stacked with all existing in incentives, excludes leased vehicles. Global inventory numbers for the Tesla lineup continue to show a slight slow and steady downtrend for the Model Y. We'll see what happens as Giga uh, Berlin does come back online if that means we get more inventory for the Model Y. Remember, the lower the inventory, the better typically for a company. So inventory only really for the Model Y is elevated right now. The Model X, the Model S, and the Model 3 are either at normal levels, like the Model X. The Model S and the Model 3 are at very low levels. That leads me to believe maybe the Model S, specifically the Model 3, are selling better here in the US, and they're just not keeping as many in inventory right now. That would also make sense when you look at Google Trends data. The Model 3 has been, uh, for quite a while, the most searched uh, of Tesla's 
you know, vehicles, especially in the US. Now, the Model 3 recently went from 38 to 36. The Model Y went from 34 to 31. The Cybertruck went from 30 to 28. And the Model X went from 10 to 11. So that's strange to see the Model X going higher and the others going lower. But it is a Friday today and the data does not get refined on a Friday. It gets refined over the weekend. And coming by Monday, we should have a better picture of what these numbers actually look like. But overall, They've looked pretty good for a while. You're seeing a lot of organic search trend activity for the Cybertruck, and that could be starting a halo effect for the Tesla brand. Advertising is also something that could have... I guess, a halo effect on the Tesla brand as well. Now, normally advertising, for an example, McDonald's does not advertise to you. So you see the commercial on your TV and you go out and you buy a, a Big Mac or whatnot. They do that, so next time you're out, you're on lunch, you know, you're you're out in a pinch, you're not making food at home, you're not going to sit down at a restaurant, and you're trying to decide where you want to eat, you have McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Taco Bell, Chipotle, all these other places. Well, if you've seen 100 McDonald's commercials in the last, you know, two years, then maybe you're going to be more inclined to choose McDonald's the next time that you're out in the market for fast food. That's kind of the basis of advertising for legacy companies that always advertise. Same for Coca-Cola and all these other companies. Tesla is a little bit different, at least right now, because they just started a 3,000 ad campaign with Google, let alone other places they may be advertising on the television. I, I, there may be some ads out there. That's really where I think Tesla should be advertising nonetheless. But uh as people maybe that are not in the Tesla ecosystem start to see those ads, maybe that does lead to more, I guess, near term conversions of people actually going out and buying Teslas. But I, I, I do think it'll still take a couple of quarters to find out if that's actually happening. Tesla option activity was very strong today. You had 686 orders from hedge funds and institutions totaling $809.41 million with a positive order value of 63%. Volume today, 60.5% to the call side and 39.5% to the put side. Now let's discuss what happened in the markets today and why I think markets are likely going lower from here. Now first up, there's a lot of speculation to what happened in the markets today. I heard it was the Russian hacking attempt on Microsoft, although Microsoft stock really didn't budge much. I mean, maybe that could make some sense. Maybe that added a little bit to this drop, but I don't think it was the reason why stocks actually fell today. It was obviously centered around your AI stocks. Your chip stocks did very poorly. Now, think about what I've been saying throughout this video. Tesla, I like Tesla because the risk is priced into Tesla stock. What area of the market specifically has no risk at all priced into it? AI stocks. Now, AI stocks on that note are priced for perfection. They're priced for excellent growth for years. They're priced for continued investment by companies and even governments into AI infrastructure. And that probably will happen. But you're already baking in multiple years of earnings into these valuations. I mean, when you look at next year's earnings and you say NVIDIA is trading at, you know, 50 times earnings or whatever the number ultimately is, right? And that's if things go as planned. So what's the risk variable if things don't go as planned, right? What's the risk variable if something were to happen in the economy or something went wrong with AI, investment slowed down? That's not even a thought process at this point. But just considering everything goes planned as smooth, you're, let's call it 50 times earnings for you know next year, 2025. Uh, let's say you're, I'm just making up numbers here, but they're probably roughly in line. Let's say 30 times earnings for uh, 2026, and let's say 25 times earnings for 2027. People are saying, hey, NVIDIA is only trading for 25 times 2027 earnings. I've heard analysts go out to 2028 to justify where these stocks are at. Because then you can say NVIDIA is trading at 20 times 2028 earnings. And that's where the S&P is. <laughs> but you're pricing in four years. So that's a bit problematic anyways. Now, let's be honest. The number one thing that is driving AI stocks higher or was driving AI stocks higher is momentum. That's a big reason why I think this rally 
uh, is over with, at least in the short term for AI stocks. And you could see a larger correction in our markets. And we'll break that down here in just a moment. But what do I actually think caused the downside today in the markets? Well, I don't expect a lot of people are are going to believe this, but this is the only thing I can justifiably think. I guess two two different things that kind of work together on that note. One, everyone's been so bullish on AI stocks, bullish on our markets. As you were starting to get up to on the S and P a, a critical level, I mean, of about fifty two hundred, lots of call options there at fifty two hundred expiring. You know, today expiring over the next couple of weeks. Market makers they wanted to get away from these call walls is essentially what it is because there's not like a you or me or a hedge fund or institution that is willing to take on massive risk and sell you options think about it like this if you make a, you know 4000% on a Palo Alto option like we did on Palo Alto earnings $60 into 2500 at one point those were going for 4 or $5000 hedge funds and institutions are not willing to risk a large position in selling you options, right? That's just not something that they're in the business of doing. So in order to keep the options market fluid, that's why you have market makers. Well, to just make sure you can go out and buy, you know, calls, buy puts, sell calls, sell puts. Well, when you get a lot of people all betting on one direction, that can be very powerful to the upside. Market makers, they can't let that go forever. And that's one reason why NVIDIA sold off before earnings. You had to get some people bearish, and then it was able to rally after earnings. Not everyone can be correct all the time, because if everyone's correct, that means there's a small group of bears, if you will, that are on the losing side. A small amount of, of individuals cannot pay out a large amount of people, a large amount of money. That just will never work. That's why it usually pays to be the contrarian. It usually pays to be the one that's bullish when everyone's bearish and be the one that is uh, bearish when everyone is bullish. So I just referenced 5,200 on the S&P. This goes for $1,000 on NVIDIA. This goes for, you know, $200 on, on, on AMD. This goes for a lot of major levels on your AI stocks, your S&P, your NASDAQ. It's all the same principle. You just got to a point where market makers, they had to get a little bit of relief in here now the second reason and i think this was you know equally i would say as impactful as what i just mentioned it was actually the data that came out this morning the data was seen as really good news i'll say number one non-farm payrolls were revised down from 357,000 last month down to 229,000. so labor market definitely not as strong as we previously thought and you added to 275,000 jobs for the month of february a lot of people are starting to say if that gets revised down 100, 150,000 jobs next month, well, maybe we're in a bigger problem than we thought. Remember 2022? 2022 happened in the markets because, uh, yeah, what? A recession, right? 2022 happened because of fears of a recession. Not the Fed was raising rates. Usually when the Fed raises rates, it's actually a pretty good time to be an investor. Just this time around when the Fed raised rates, you know, people were like, oh my gosh, we're going to go into a recession. They sold stocks ahead of the time. Don't fight the Fed. And uh, that was a good idea if you sold, you know, when the Fed started talking about raising rates. And best believe, the next time around, if inflation comes back in our lifetime and the Fed talks about raising rates, I'm going to sell all my stocks. You're going to sell all your stocks. Everyone else is going to sell all their stocks. And you probably get a similar event to 2022, right? People learned a lot from 2022. I know I did personally. But again, back to the data this morning, we were expecting the unemployment rate to come in at 3.7%. It came in at 3.9%. Might sound like not a big deal to you, but take a look at the last year. This is the highest the unemployment rate has been in the last year. Well, wait, let's take this out a little further. This is the highest the unemployment rate has been since, well, you guessed it, January of 2022 and the unemployment rate was 4%. Beyond that, you have to go back to November of 2021 when the unemployment rate was 4.1%. Now, why is that potentially a big deal? Because what happened from January through June, the first two quarters of 2022, you were in a technical recession. GDP was negative. The government did not declare it a recession because unemployment did not spike. Initial jobless claims did not spike. And we continue to add jobs to the economy. Although if you ask any kind of, you know, market participant out there, they would say, yeah, two quarters of declining GDP. That's typically what you call a recession. So uh, yeah, last time unemployment was this high. 
well or or you know was where it is now 3.9 percent still relatively low in the grand scope of the history of the u.s or even pre-pandemic numbers but you went into a recession back here and this is a you know two-year high what comes next do we go over four percent do we start to rise even more then you're you're pretty you're getting you're getting there right recession probably coming at that point right so uh yeah that's a big problem and for the areas of the markets that are not priced for a recession at all they got hit the most like your ai stocks i mean even take a look at nvidia here in after hours it's quite disgusting nvidia is down almost two percent in after hours down to $860 per share. That means NVIDIA lost $114 to its share price today. That's insane. You don't see NVIDIA move like a penny stock all too often. Now, in simplest terms, why do I think the markets are going to continue to fall from here? Well, again, back to the argument of everything being priced in peaches and roses for AI stocks for multiple years to come. Well, you got kind of, you know, stretched on evaluation wise. You got, uh, you know, to the point of FOMO. Really, what was driving NVIDIA was momentum. What's what what's driving SMCI is momentum. And a lot of other stocks, you know, you can also make that comparison for even maybe a Microsoft, right? It's hard to justify my, even Microsoft's valuation. It, it's all been momentum based. When you get a sharp kind of reset, kills momentum you're not going to see as many people rushing in to buy call options anymore if anything people are going to start buying puts and selling out of their positions and taking profits that's a very powerful force the biggest thing that drives markets in the short term is momentum the, the thing that drives stocks in the long term is earnings and revenue growth and beating on guidance but in the near term it's all about momentum now more on a technician kind of basis you ripped on the market open you hit the high, you came down, you bounced at the lows about 75%, three quarters of the way through the trading day. You've seen a very nice bounce, and then you dropped all the way back to close almost at the lows. That's not exactly a strong ending to a weekday. That also supports and suggests that you could see larger downside in the markets. But I think it really comes down to what we're going to get next week with CPI coming out on Tuesday and with the ARM lockup period. That's another reason why stocks like NVIDIA sold off so much today, because everyone knows there's this lockup period coming next week for ARM. Now, I'm just going to keep this very simple. I've went over this before, and I, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but only about 10% of the float of ARM is actually trading out there. Now, keep in mind what happened today. NVIDIA, AMD, all these stocks sold off in sympathy. It's all algos, market makers, and, and, and quant trading programs that are essentially doing the, the pulling in the markets. Whatever they want to see happen is what happens to stocks. So let's just keep this very simple. If, if ARM sells off, likely these other AI stocks do as well. And there was likely some pricing into that because only 10% of the flow of ARM is currently trading. 90.5% of the flow is currently locked up. So that's 94 million shares that are currently eligible out there in the marketplace to be bought or sold. Of course, ARM had, you know, good earnings, good guidance. There's FOMO around AI. ARM did very well. It's, it's as simple as that. The problem is SoftBank has not been doing so well. SoftBank's entire company value is about $89 billion, $87, $89 billion. It usually fluctuates in, in between that range. The value of their ARM position, SoftBank's ARM position, is hundred and uh, roughly $125, $130 billion. So it's 30 plus percent more valuable than the entire company value of SoftBank. Now, it's Mitsubishi's son, I think that's how you say his name, the CEO of, uh, of, of, of SoftBank, the founder and CEO of SoftBank. He wants to start a $100 billion chip venture to rival NVIDIA, likely where some of that money going to come from. It's probably going to come from their ARM stake. SoftBank, they tried to sell ARM for $40 billion back in 2022 to NVIDIA. That deal obviously got shut down by regular by regulators in Europe. They bought the company for $32 billion. They were willing to net an $8 billion profit on their ARM buyout that they bought back in 2016. You don't think they're going to take some profits? Uh, yeah, 
they're going to. The scariest part is SoftBank owns 929.7 million shares of ARM. There's 94 million trading today. That's a very important number. Keep that in mind. If SoftBank sells 1% of their ARM position, that will add 10% more shares to the float that's currently trading today. That would be about 9.3 million shares that would be added. Out of 94 million shares, that's about 10%. And that's only if SoftBank sells 1% of their position. 1%. If they add, or if they sold half of 1%, that would be 4.5 million shares that would be sold onto the markets, potentially coming this upcoming Tuesday. And I would imagine they're going to go with a number, right? They're going to go with half of 1%, even a quarter of 1%. I mean, that's still going to be over 2 million shares that would be sold onto the markets every single day. The average trading volume in ARM is around 15 million shares every single day. So no matter which way you want to put it, if ARM sells a fraction of a fraction of their position every day, which they will likely do, they don't want to tank the stock by trying to sell 30 million shares the first day. That would be a total shit show. But probably just incrementally every single day, millions of shares they're likely to be selling. That's going to cause big downside pressure to ARM. And uh, that's probably going to cause a lot of downside pressure to NVIDIA, to you know your other AI stocks as well. And that is another reason why I do believe markets will continue to fall. This momentum is gone. I mean, you can see this in after hours as well. Nvidia now down about 2.2%, down to $856 per share. Next week could gear up to be a pretty rough one for the markets. Now, as promised, I will show you my arm trade now would i buy this thing absolutely not i would stay away from arm with a 10 foot pole if if arm fell to like 20 30 dollars per share i would consider buying the stock that's that's where i think the risk to reward makes a lot more sense for arm i mean robin hood's fair value assessment is 45 dollars, and they're usually on the high side with with their assessment right and based on even my own calculations this stock should probably be $20, $30 per share. That's that's where I would consider buying the stock as a long-term kind of buy and hold. Here's the trade that I have. I'm down a lot. I'm down a, I'm down a lot. I went into this way too early. I figured the markets would kind of uh, in, it, imply um, that there would be downside coming on March 12th. Good thing I got some time on these contracts, though, um, which it's it's for that specific reason. I do have 35 $70 puts for $23 a piece. That's what they are going for as of right now. Now, I also have 50 $55 puts, but these expirations are April 19th. So the lockup period is next Tuesday on March 12th. I got this additional time and went out the money because I'm not necessarily expecting the $55 puts are going to go in the money. Could the $70 puts go in the money? Potentially. That's a possibility, but that would be, you know, big downside from here. What? Just to do some kind of simple, simple, uh, let Robin Hood do the math for me. If the $70 puts went in the money, that would be downside of about 46.5% from here. Could that happen? Yeah, that, that, that could definitely happen. Is it likely to happen? Probably not. But let's say you do get some big selling coming on ARM and with SoftBank on a, you know Tuesday of next week or, or maybe just over the next couple of weeks. Then people are going to start rushing into these put options, right? The IV is going to go up and the price of these options are likely going to go up as well. Uh, these options are already expensive, but let's say ARM falls to $100 per share. These $70 puts... And let's say that happens over the next two or three weeks. These arm puts are going to be going for a lot more than $23 a piece. People like to pile on to either direction, the upside or the downside. So this is really a flip on uh, the increase of value these options will likely see. Let's say if arm does have a 10% drop on, you know, March 12th, which I think is probably the most likely scenario. Absolutely. I would not trade this if uh, I were you guys. It's very expensive to play uh, ARM options. And if you buy options, you will likely lose all of your money. Odds are good. You'll lose all of your money. Um, And I'm prepared to lose the $1,105 that I currently have in this position. I've been offsetting some of this loss, $540 so far, down about 32 
2.86%, with other gains elsewhere. I mean, we've had some very good re- trades in 2024. It's it's it's, it's been a, a pretty good time for your trader out there. So, uh, yeah, this is just my personal strategy. This is what I'm doing. But keep in mind, this is like, uh, what? two percent of the portfolio something along those lines so it's not a lot of the portfolio that i'm risking if this went to zero and i would likely cut it out beforehand if i'm wrong anyways and nvidia just continues to drill down about 2.3 percent here in extended trading let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section uh where do you think the markets are going next from here personally again like i said in the last video i think uh minimum 10 percent five ten percent correction here coming but could it get larger than that let me know what you think down below in the comment section if you guys want to come trade with us live in real time i know that wasn't the best trade to show to uh to kind of promote the trading community but again i make it very clear if i make a trade i'm expecting it to lose uh, to some degree, there's always risk management that goes al- along with things. I obviously didn't buy um, weekly options. I did go out over a month on these contracts from the end of the lockup period. You have five weeks after the lockup period to give these contracts some time to work for you. But again, if you guys want to come join that trading community, check out that link down below in the description of this video. I did want to share that trade because of an out right bearish on arm and i just want to show you that I'm, I'm either going to stand on that statement and lose money like i already have or i'm going to be right and these contracts could make me thousands of dollars twenty thirty thousand dollars if i'm correct and let's say the 70 dollars puts do go into the money but we'll see obviously i uh, don't want to don't want to hype that up all too much again you'll probably lose all of your money if you trade options especially from some random guy on a uh, youtube that is uh creepy apparently sits in the dark and i don't know what's wrong with my voice but uh maybe i'll have to look into that thank you for watching enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you in the next one